Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Well, here we are back in the good old USA. And what says more about America than a good old American Motors Hudson? So today we have Mobius's 1953 Hudson Hornet. And this is a really cool box art. Check out that great 1950s garage in there. The only thing I wish is that you actually got the figure in the gas pump, because that would be cool. Have like the mechanic or, you know, whatever, wiping down the windshield. The gas station attendant, that's what I'm trying to find the words for. But anyway, American Motors and America. For spacious, well, whatever, anyway. <laughs> Can't remember the words, but you know what I mean. All right, so without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. And now we go all the way back to 1953 to check out the amazing Mobius Models 1953 Hudson Hornet. This has the fabulous twin H power, is molded in 125th scale, and is a skill level 3 model kit intended for ages 15 and up. So you know there's going to be some really cool stuff inside here. Produced from all new state of the art tooling by the model manufacturer you can trust, Mobius Models. Look at these great features. Here we have the interior, which is highly detailed. We've got over 120 parts, and this is a skill level 3 kit recommended for ages 15 and up. I like this side three quarter view of our finished Hudson, as well as that interior shot showing you the handles on the back of the seats. These are to help assist customers in as they are grab handles. They are also racks for holding blankets because the heaters in these cars were not quite like our heaters now. So you still had to cover yourself in the back on your legs if it got cold in the winter. Check it out. We also have authentic step down chassis. Includes realistic decals for the engine bay and interior. And you also have a detailed H145 engine with an opening hood. Now here you can see the rear three quarter of the car as well as underneath the hood with our twin H power. Really awesome. I can't wait to check this thing out. Now 1954 is the year that American Motors Incorporated. However, American Motors was made up of Hudson and Nash and I do believe Rambler as well. And they all merged to make AMC. So now let's actually see what's in our model of this Hudson by taking the lid off and putting it somewhere off camera. There we go. Okay, check this out. So here we've got a bag with some of the cool parts. There's that sun visor that's in there. Oh, we got chrome coming up next. Look at the nice big hubcaps on there. And the bumper, it's even open there for the license plate shrouds and whatever else is going on. Really cool. Now we've got our body right in here. Amazing stuff. And our undercarriage, look at how detailed that is. All right, we're gonna have fun when we actually open this up and have a look. And there we've got our clear components in the box. We also have pad printed white wall tires. Then we've got our wonderful parts here, which has that twin H motor right, right there where you can see it. We also have the interior. Now this is a separate molded panel type interior. Builds up in a lot of pieces, which is really good. You can get all the detail in there. What do we have here? We've got a metal axle. That's cool. Then we've got our decals, which we will reveal the mystery at the end of the video. And then we've got this nice high colored instruction sheet. So let's clear all this out of the way and we'll start by looking at the instructions so that we know how this thing goes together before we take a closer look at the parts. Here's our instruction sheet and you can see it's the same wonderful artwork that you found on the front of the box. And I do love that Mobius gives you full color instructions. I wish the other companies would do the same because I find that they are really helpful in order to get a sense of what the model is like, as opposed to just the black and white ones or ones without even any pictures in them. Underneath our picture, we find the information we need, like the important read this first section, how to paint your model kit and the decal application, as well as our keys to the parts. 
a number with a circle in it is a plastic part, and a number with a square around it is a decal. The first part of our instruction sheet shows our engine going together, and you can see there are a lot of really good parts in this. We have a cylinder head, a fan, a fan belt, the engine front cover, engine right and left hand sides, as well as the engine pan. And nicely, Mobius has labeled what all these parts are. So if you are studying to be a mechanic, you will learn all this that you need to know just from building the kit. Secondly, we have our carburetors here. Intake manifold, the exhaust manifold. Now, being a six cylinder, this is all on the same side and the intake being mounted above the exhaust. We have the crankcase ventilation tube, throttle linkage post, starter oil filter. We have a distributor. We've got our ignition coil here, our engine oil filler tube, and the generator, as well as the fuel pump. Down here we have our air cleaner assembly, and we get two of them, and both of them consist of three parts. We have the air cleaner canister bottom and the top, as well as the air cleaner canister caps. Then we have our throttle linkage, which goes on to here, and our exhaust manifold extension. And to complete the engine, we have the twin H power decals, which you get two of for the canisters, and they go here and here. Assembly step two shows our wheels and axles getting together. And what we have is the simple one-piece wheel going into the tire, and you would make up four of these. Then we have our front spindle and the brake backing plate. Now these would be drum brakes on this car, but there is the pin that holds them all together. So you would want to push this all through here, and then just apply a little bit of glue on the end and glue your wheel to the plastic pin. Out back, we have the backing plates on our differential, and this is the two-piece axle housing. So you've got the top and the bottom going together. The differential is right there. Here we have our chassis assembly, and this is really nice because you get a floor pan and a upper rear cross member. You get independent springs, lower A arms. You also have a tie rod, and oh, well, this is a tie rod. This is the front sway bar. There's our master cylinder, and that actually glues under the floor here. And uh, we have a steel axle going through our rear plastic axle, as well as full leaf springs and a rear sway bar, two shock absorbers. Then we have our drive shaft in here and our rear exhaust. So again, Mobius is really making these Hudsons a work of art. Mobius is really stepping up the game with their multi-piece interior for the Hudson. And what makes this really excellent is the side panels are wonderful for adding in the details like the door handles and the armrests. And with a multi-piece interior, it looks more accurate. Up here, we have the decal location for our interior. And what makes this nice is that it's easy to add the decals onto your kit. Here we have the dashboard and all the instrument and glove box decals. The steering wheel with the horn button decal going on. And our heater motor down here with a little emblem for Hudson going on in place. Now, once that's all assembled, you have your steering column, your steering wheel, your dashboard, your heater, two-piece front bench seat with these handles on the back, again, used as a handle or to hold your towels for, or blankets, I should say, in case the heater doesn't get to the back, you can still be warm in winter. There's the inner door panels, which will glue onto here and here, and we have our pedal cluster down below. Here in panel 5, we have the engine installation, and you can see our twin H power engine being put in place. There is a little circle down here and a pin on the bottom of the oil pan. Those two would go together with some glue in the middle, and the drive shaft would hook up into the back of the transmission. And then our exhaust manifold pipe would hook up to the exhaust pipe underneath the car. After that, you have a lower radiator hose and an upper radiator hose, which is always nice for accuracy in the model. And those go onto your radiator. And here we have a decal going on top of the radiator as well. Panel 6 over here is the beginning of the body. 
and we have our firewall with a diagonal brace in here and then we have the windshield wiper mechanisms there and there as well as right and left horns. A decal also goes up here on our firewall. In panel 6B to E what we have is all the pieces of our body being put in. So up here we've got a sunshade, we've got a radio antenna that says note radio antenna is very fragile be very careful while cutting it off of the sprue. We also have a side view mirror, windshield wipers, we've got a grill, and here we have an inner grill support bar, left and right side parking lenses, front bumper, headlight bezels, and headlight lenses going in. Very nice. Did I say rear view mirror before? Can't remember. But you have two of them, left and right hand side, we also have our firewall assembly going up in there. We've got our windshield. We also have the sun visors here and here. Side vent window wings. And then the rear windows and side glass. And then here we've got the gas filler door going right there. It's neat that they molded that in. I do believe this is for uh, their racing edition of the Hudson Hornet. They would leave the uh, filler door off, of course, so it's easy to fill it up as you're going around the oval track. <laughs> you don't fill it as you're driving around the oval track, but when you come into the pits. Anyway, there is the emblem for the trunk lid. We also have the rear taillight bezels and then our valance panel as well as the rear bumper. And it says, note, backup lights were not standard equipment on cars in 1953. Decide if you're going to use backup lights. If not, carefully sand locator circles for them off the car, uh, off the car body, and discard the unused parts. So that's nice, a little optional thing to add to your model in case you want it. Panel 7 shows our body to chassis assembly, and this would easily click down into place with a little bit of glue. And there we have the decals being put on to the body. So the little Hudson one that goes down here, as well as our license plates. And what it says is you have two license plates. Two license plates are included as options. If you desire to add a license plate to the vehicle, apply decal before attaching to the bumper. Now one thing that is cool about this is you can build it with the hood up or down. And if you're going for the hood up, supposing you're making a diorama and you want a mechanic to be under the hood working on the engine, then you would use these hinges here and glue them to there and there. And then these are hood hinge props for the hood. And those would fold up as the hood opens and then you can lock them in place so the hood doesn't close on you. And we also have our hood ornament and a battery going in place, as well as some decals here, and the Hudson logo going right in the center of the grill. Now, I was watching a video with Jay Leno and his Hudson, and he was saying that this logo lit up at night. So that is really a cool thing. Now, what really makes these instructions stand out from the competitors to Mobius is the use of their full-color illustrations. So here we have the Under the Hood, which shows you what it would look like all painted up and the color callouts and where all the decals go. Here we have the interior again with the same thing. It says, note the monochrome interior. Oh, sorry, note the monochrome interior. The Hudson Hornet had one of three available interior color schemes, gray, tan, and muted gray. See page six for details. So again, gives you an idea of what's going on. And here is the chassis underneath. Note, sorry, note the use of a variety of finishes from flat to high gloss on various parts of the chassis. This adds realism and interest to the completed model. See page six for color suggestions. Note how exhaust pipe and drive shaft pass through oval holes created by upper cross member. Be sure Oh, upper cross member and frame. Be sure pipe and shaft are in position on frame before gluing upper cross member in place. 
Note the subtle weathering on various metal parts of the chassis, which provide a realistic appearance to the model's underside. So again, these are really helpful hints from Mobius. Down below, we have the dash and firewall, as well as the engine. And there it shows the decals for the speedometer, the fuel and temperature gauge, the clock, ashtray, glove box, radio, heater emblem, cow label. That would be on the top of the firewall. And then over here we've got our engine, and it's showing the intake manifold, exhaust manifold, all this stuff. And again, really well done by Mobius, and really helpful to the model builder. Here we have the body exterior. We've got the trunk lid decal right there. License plate in place. The Hudson emblem. Ah, that's what it is, the rocket with the H's in it. And then here it says, note that this build-up utilizes a custom color scheme. See page 6 for a detailed list of historically accurate Hudson Hornet factory paint schemes. Again, all that attention to detail really pays off on this model. Here we have page 6 for... Here's page 6 that the instructions were referring to earlier. And what we have here are boxes with the suggested paint colors, body colors, upholstery colors, and two-tone color combinations. So the paints we need are flat rubber, flat black, burnt iron or rusty iron, semi-gloss black, gloss yellow, steel, chrome silver, wood, and clear red. And for an example, they have paint the fan belt radiator hoses, hoses on the heater box with the flat rubber. For body colors, it says the 1953 Hudson Hornet body came in a variety of factory colors, including some striking two-tone versions. Although you may wish to paint your Hornet in a custom color of your own choosing, those desiring historical accuracy may refer to the following list. Original Hudson factory paint codes have been provided along with the corresponding Ditzler code. There are many automotive paint sources that provide historical color matching. So these are monotone colors. you got Broadway Blue, Robins A Green, Pearl Gray Poly, Texas Tan Poly, Southern Blue, Ebony Black, Toro Red, Honey Cream, Bluegrass Green, Surf Green, Seal Gray, and Meadow Green Poly. Down here we have the upholstery colors, and it says the 1953 Hudson Hornet interior consisted of one of three coordinated monotone interiors, gray, tan, or muted blue. Various shades of each color were used in specific areas of the vehicle interior. Carpet, dark gray, tan, or muted blue. Seats, front and top, medium gray, tan, or muted blue. Seats, pleated inserts, light gray, tan, or muted blue. Headliner, light gray, tan, or muted blue. Here we have the two-tone colors, so you have to match up the numbers up top, like here's Meadow Green Poly, 41303. And it should be down here. So here's 41303. And then the top colors are going to be something a bit different again. So here we have a two-tone with 80600 and 41298. So looking up top, I'm not sure what 80600 is, as it's not listed here. But there is the bottom color. So 4129 is the Robin's Egg Green. There is also a big thank you from Mobius Models down at the bottom. And I won't read all of this, but it's a thank you to the whole Hostelers Hudson Museum. And then we have a website here as well. And author Anderson and Bill Coutier, or Coulter, John Mueller, da Dale Cooper, and you, the builder, for supporting the hobby by purchasing this kit. We hope you are pleased and well, and we hope there will be much more to come for fans of vintage automotive subjects. Now let's take a look at our wonderful Hudson body here. And you can see right away that it is really cool. You've got the engine bay all detailed out, and there is a pan here for the battery to mount on, which is really nice because usually model kits don't have that. The battery sits on the side. Now looking at the side of the model, there is a bit of flash around the bottom edge, but here you've got the wonderful Hudson trim. And this long piece of trim goes up and meets the rocket at front. You also have beautiful rocker panel trim and a little fender skirt, this little square bit right back here. 
bringing it up to the camera you can see this a lot better it looks really good it looks like it'd be easy to put bare metal foil and some volatile chrome paint on there there's a slight seam line running right there up along the headlight and coming down into here so you'll have to deal with that <clears throat> but it looks like a little bit of fine sandpaper would finish it off check out that engine bay now there's that pan in there again two little holes to mount the battery and a big one and a small one so you can't have the battery go in there backwards because it won't go in the holes so kudos to Mobius for doing that beautiful windshield now out in the back you got that nice shape this is sort of reminiscent of the Mercury for 49 and there you've got that gas filler cap right there for your NASCAR racing um, you might even be able to put a little hinge in there if you're uh, really a talented model builder, which I am not. There's a hole for the side view mirrors and holes for the windshield wipers. And I'll just turn this upside down. There is quite a bit of mold marks and some mold release agents. So you're going to have to scrub this with soap and water. Uh, yeah, quite a lot of mold marks in here. But uh, luckily they're on the inside of the body and will hopefully be covered up mostly with the upholstery and interior stuff. Looks like little backstops for the window to rest in. So again, very nicely done. There are some sunken in details for adding in rear view mirrors and your sun visors. Even nicely sunken in there. But yeah, this will be a fun one to build and it will look good with your early 50s cars on your shelf. Here's our chassis pan and again you can see the step down in the floor panels. So right there and there are the bars of the frame, I believe. I'm not sure if it would line up with the frame. But uh, this is to lower the floor. Now the Hudsons were lower than the other cars of that era just because of the step down. And for that, they were able to get in the corners faster because of the lower center of gravity. Now here we have a mold stamp, Mobius, right underneath there, from 2015 copyright, and this is made in China, although Mobius is a U.S. company. There's underneath, and you can see the nice detail here on the trunk, or the fuel cell, actually. And there we have the spare tire, and these nice little pleated panels. Again, very nicely done. You will have to clean up the edges, of course, but maybe that goes without saying. And underneath the chassis, we have the Hudson frame, and here you can see it is a full perimeter frame, and there is the step-down portion in the center. So the you're actually sitting in between the frame rails on this, which was very unique and rare for that type of car back in that era. And that is what gave it that speed advantage, the low center of gravity. And you can really see how much they stepped this down by looking at the sunken in frame rails in the middle. Again, really cool how Hudson did this. Here you got a little tube, I think this is for your gas filler pipe right in there. <laughs> neat stuff. Take a look at that area there. That is, of course, your cross member for your steering and your front suspension. Again, really cool. So what I'm, I've noticed, actually, there's a crack right in here. So I don't know if your frame has that. Hopefully not. So I'm going to have to apply a bit of liquid glue in there and then just hold these together. Maybe I could even slot a little tiny piece of plastic in there just to act as a brace. But this here, we've got our interior. So now you can see how this uh, ended up working. So it corresponds to this area here, which is where our seats are going to mount. But that's also that area that's sunken in for the cross member. So now you're beginning to see just how low the chassis is into that frame and if I just turn around here and grab the body back again remember this was all put together in the kit or sorry in the packaging <laughs> so here well let's do one at a time so now we 
can see how the chassis comes in. And it's got these little uh, little blades that are sticking out here that almost touch the inner fender apron. I don't know if... No, I don't think they would, but... Then we've got our frame going into the chassis. And it looks like the fit and finish is really nice on this. So once the interior gets side panels, it should sit up like that. And there you have the Hudson underneath. And again, it looks really nice and detailed. Really crisp and should be a lot of fun to put together. On this parts tree, it looks like we've got two sun visors and our wheel backs for the drum brakes, as well as suspension components and the pins for the axles. One thing that is nice is on these king pins, they have this nice deep collar right in here, which should help align those pins. And uh, that is part of the problem with this pin arrangement is if this isn't a long enough collar, your wheels tend to flip in and out. That's what's going on on my 1969 uh, Ford, what is it, the Cobra kit from AMT. The wheels have a little bit of droop, and then when you put them on the table, they straighten up because there's the pressure, you know, on the wheels. But with this, it almost looks like there wouldn't be that instant. So that's always nice. There's the horns and the springs and our master cylinder for the brakes. Again, really nice looking stuff. This even looks like some racing components. These would be straps for holding down the Hudson hood and trunk lid, but I don't think they're part of this particular build. I do believe there's a NASCAR or a race car version of this kit, but I'd have to look it up online. Carrying on, we have the wonderful rear springs up here with a little button on the top for mounting the shocks onto. We have our under the dashboard heater, and then we've got the dual exhaust pipe running back here. And this component, not totally sure what that is. Anyway, there's one of the cross braces. There is our uh, tie rods. Here we have our license plate backs and the back of the seat. And it's got some nice pockets on the back of the seat molded in place. So again, you can put things back there, much like a modern car. Oh, I missed the fan. The fan is right there. Again, really well detailed. The license plates are actually framed, so that's nice. They're not just flat like in some of the AMT kits. Mold marks are on the inside, so they're nice and hidden on that seat. Again, oh, I see what this is. This is part of the exhaust manifold, and that little sunken in bit back here goes on this little pin right there. But from this side, it's smooth, so you can't really tell what that is. But I guess this would be coming off the motor down this way. Again, really nice work by Mobius, and it looks like the actual car scaled down. On this parts tree, we can see some of the frame and chassis suspension components, as well as our hood and seat and interior bits. So there's our drive shaft and our differential, two pieces. We have our firewall, shock absorbers, and those A-arms, as well as the radiator pedals, dashboard. So let's just turn this over so we can see this side of it. Look at that wonderful dashboard. All the all the uh, surface areas in here are nice and flat for those decals to sit down on. They're not trying to uh, go in on needles or anything like that. You know, raised needles, speedometer needles. The radiator looks good, has nice texture in here. Look at the big bench seat, nice and plushy and comfortable to sit on. We also have a wonderful looking hood here. There's a bit of flash on the bottom, but this seems like it's very minor. Should be able to go together well. Underneath the hood, you've got these spots for those braces, as well as little pins for the hood hinges if you want this up. There are some mold marks in here, but they should be able to come out easily. Not too much of a texture underneath there, so you're not going to, you know, have a texture on the mold marks, sand it down, and then it's all smooth there and textured back here. So that's always a good sign. But yeah, overall, really nice. You can see the vent up top, or maybe it's a speaker grill. Uh, most of these old cars, like my 72 Oldsmobile, the radio is an AM radio, and it's down below. And then up top in the center was a speaker. 
paper cone. <laughs> I remember when that ripped, <laughs> the nice uh, music all of a sudden was going because <laughs> the paper cone ripped and was vibrating together all weird. But yeah, overall, I would give these parts uh, A+. Here we have the parts tree that contains all our engine components. Right and left hand side of the engine block, the oil pan, the cylinder head, our exhaust manifold, our intake manifold, the carburetors, and the battery as well. Again, look at the nice attention to detail you get in this. Looks like the real thing, only smaller. The six-cylinder was the most powerful in this year. It actually had 10 more horsepower than the Oldsmobile V8 with the overhead valves. So that is saying quite a lot. Again, nice work in there. Nice, clean and crisp. Minimal flash. Turning it over, there is a bit of flash and mold marks up underneath here. <clears throat> so make sure you have them all nice and flat so that everything fits together nicely. Be interesting to see how these alignment pegs go into the holes because I know that can be quite a problem with some of the other manufacturers' model kits. And usually I cut the pins off. But there is a double lip sort of thing in here. If you can see it. You got the flat edge of the engine and then this little blade comes up and goes around there and that will help align it because there's a sunken in portion on the engine block as well. So these side pins may or may not really matter for putting the engine together, but it is always nice to have an extra spot for glue. So a little bit of liquid cement in there and then push it all in should work out well. But overall I'm quite impressed with this look at our engine parts. And finally for the interior we have the rear seat as well as our right and left hand side door panels. And look at these door handles. They are really nice. Looks like the real thing. Only smaller. There's quite a lot of handles on this front door. Window winder. The handle to get out. Oh, yes, I know what it is. One of these would be the winder for the no draft or little side window. And then the, I take it the lower one would be for the, the passenger window. And then you got this little button here. So that might be a dome light. Maybe. I'm not 100% familiar with the interiors of the Hudson. Maybe I should have watched Jay Leno's video a little bit more. <laughs> I was eager to make this video, so I just watched a little beginning bit of it and then ran down here and started filming. But uh, yeah, overall, I mean, that looks like such a plushy seat to fit in. Have to go see my friend Jay on his channel called What It's Like. Maybe he's... Uh, actually reviewed this. He goes into the cars and sits in them and films and uh, lets you know exactly what's going on. Anyway, there is that door panel. Again, really nice. Looks like might even have uh, chrome down at the bottom and top. Again, I'll have to look at it. But I do like the separately molded stuff because it makes the interior look so much more realistic. And as our final bit of the gray colored plastic, or maybe it's a tan colored plastic, we have our sun visor and the exhaust pipe and a bit of the manifold to the exhaust pipe. So again, very, very simple. You got these mufflers here and here. I don't know if one of these is a resonator or what the deal was. Not totally up on my very early 50s cars, but overall it does look good. And we also have another collector pipe here going down taking your two exhausts from the twin manifold and bringing them into one, going out a single exhaust pipe. It would be interesting to see this with duels. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, really cool. Our sun visor has a little split in the top and then turning it over, another little split down there. A couple of mold marks in the corners, not too hard to deal with. But again, we'll add immensely to the look of your car. Two, five, seven. Our model kit comes with two chrome parts trees, but we'll just focus on the first one first. Interestingly, this has a huge gap right here, so I'm not sure what went in there, but it may have been some parts for the race car version of this kit, or even there is a convertible as well. 
and it's a 52, but it shares the same body, and I can imagine it shares the same chrome parts tree. Now here we have our wheels and those wonderful Hudson hubcaps. Got a bumper right there, and we also have our steering wheel, all molded in chrome, so all you need to do is just paint the outer ring, which is a real help. We also have a chrome-plated steering column. Now i got to take a look at that online, see if Hudson actually had a full chrome-plated steering column. Probably, if it's in the kit, it must have. There's our side mirrors, windshield wipers, and another bumper. This one's the front, I believe, with a little triangle. The back is more squared out. But again, really nice. Take a look at those wheels. Now they have the little perforations around them for that tire to go into. And they are kind of blanked inside here, which is interesting. Remember, there's chrome inside there, so you want to clear that out so the pin can glue down into it. But I do believe these would self-guide into the brake backing plates, which is really nice if they do. I'll uh, bring those parts up in a minute and we'll have a look. But overall, really nice looking stuff. Not too much on mold marks flipping this parts tree over. So you can get away with quite a bit. But again, really nice looking chrome and it looks like a lot of fun. I'm just going to test that theory. Here is the brake backing plate. And you can actually see that these little bits stick out quite a ways. So maybe this is a self-guiding wheel, which means that it won't collapse. Yeah, that looks like those two go together. Like, I mean, count gets countersunk in there. So that's really good. So you won't get that funny, you know, wheel slope issue that I had on the 69 Cobra. Because, oops, something broke off there. <laughs> because this little circle in here goes into this little sticking out portion and that'll prevent the wheel from sagging in place and make for a nice running or rolling, I guess, model kit. Here we have our second chrome parts tree and you can see that we get two grills in here and I do believe one of these is for the race car version because it's missing the little triangle piece in here but it does have notches for it as if it had been removed, so that's pretty cool. There's that front valence pan, or rolled pan, or whatever, that goes underneath the front of the car. The little Hudson rocket with the H in it that goes on the trunk lid. And then we have this bird-looking thing, but that's actually the front hood emblem. It's supposed to go this way on the hood. And there's those little chrome bars underneath to make it look like a vent. I wonder if some of these would fit under a 50 Ford. <laughs> but at any rate, I think the Hudson is a little bit wider. Now, the positioning of Hudson in the automotive world at the time was in that sort of mid, I guess, what would you call it? The middle class kind of thing. So Chevy and that, Chevy and your basic Ford is designed for the uh, low income type of person or, you know, whatever, right? And this would be in the Buick, Mercury, and I guess Dodge at the time, sort of that ballpark. Because remember, Dodge and Plymouth sort of trade positioning. Sometimes Plymouth is the low introductory model. Other times Plymouth is the upper class model, or the middle class. Chrysler would be the upper class model, but yeah. So it is somewhere in that ballpark and could even be in the Oldsmobile price range. Here we have the glass, and I'm just going to leave it in the bag this time around because of the risk of having it get scratched or whatever. But I think the bag is pretty clear so we can see what's going on. So there we've got our headlights, and they have the nice detail in them so that you've got the cross hatching. And remember to have this go north and south, east and west, and not at some weird angle. We also have our front windshield, and it's got a little notch right in here, so it will line up with that center bar, and that is really good. I wish uh, AMT had that on their 49 Fords, instead of the bar just sitting on top of the glass. This is countersunk. There's our little lights. Again, lots of small stuff, and our side no-draft windows. There we've got our rear window. Oh, those little holes on the inside of the car are meant for locking in onto these tabs. 
up here and here. And then we have red tail lights, which is always nice. Pardon the rustling sound. And here's a moment you've been waiting for, the reveal of the decal sheet. So let's just slip the top paper off. And there it is. <laughs> now, I had to laugh because this is quite a big piece of paper for just a bunch of little teeny decals. And I do feel a little bit uh, betrayed because they only give you one license plate down here. And I thought there was a choice of two different types. So I guess that's kind of out of the question now. But at any rate, there you have your speedometer and odometer, as well as all the different little bits and pieces. There's a the glove box door. Again, it's not a bad decal sheet, but uh, there are no like big flames or sponsorship numbers for the drag racer or anything like that. Just your basic, basic Hudson details. Here we have the wonderful looking tires for our 1953 Hudson. And you'll notice that there are no manufacturer names on these, like Firestone or Atlas or even Goodyear. They are nondescript. That's okay. Now, if you want to have the black wall, you could always just put the white walls in. A lot of people back in the 50s did that. My dad was telling me. Now, on the edge, you've got this wonderful looking tread in here. Again, really nice, big, thick tires. They look like they would be able to support the weight of this Hudson. Now, normally, like something like the AMT 53 Ford, they have the really skinny tires, which I guess is ample. But these look really wide and meaty. So again, really awesome looking stuff from Mobius. After we've seen all the parts and the instruction sheet, I would say that this model kit is a pretty good advanced kit for anybody that wants to build it. The parts count is great. The colored instructions are also really nice. The paint color callouts really help, as well as the optional bits in the kit. So if you're looking for something more advanced, skill level 3 is your go-to with this amazing 53 Hudson Hornet by Mobius. America, America, God shine its light on the bum, 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 bum. I hope you enjoyed that great video where we got to take a look at Mobius's 1953 Hudson Hornet. Now, if you've built this model, I would sure love to know how you enjoyed it. Did it go together easily? Did you have to file something off of something to make it fit? Let us know in the comment section down below. Now, if you really dig these great videos and you want to see more of them, you can't get enough. Well, click that subscribe button and you can become a subscriber. Also click on the notification bell and get all the notifications, especially on your phone. Now, if phones are modern technology and that's where it's all at, man. No more rotary phones for you. Now you get a phone camera and everything else right on your simple phone. So basically click that notification bell, turn on all notifications. So when I upload a video, <laughs> Hey, what's this on my phone? It is a cool uploaded video from Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. I'm going to watch that now. And that's what happens to you if you click those notification bells. And say, if you're already a subscriber to this channel and you want to turn the volume up a little bit and go to the next level, up that staircase, up the ascend, ascend, ascend Jeremiah, up the stairs. <laughs> Click that join button and become a member of this channel for as little as $2 a month. $24 in a year, you know, monthly. You get to become a member. You get to show your support. And by doing that, you get your name at the end of the credits like these great people did here. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to see the names because you got red, white, and blue. And, well, maybe you can see them up here, but the stars, you know, knock out some of the letters as it scrolls up. But at any rate... I won't have this American flag up all the time, so you will get to see those names. And one of those names could be your name. And I also have Patreon as well, but that's another story. But anyway, the names. So there they go up the screen. And you could be on there if you're a member. Now that just shows that you're a member of the channel, but what else happens? Well, here's a cool feature that YouTube has. That I'm not sure if you know about because it's fairly recent. Basically, when you become a member, and let's say, uh, let's say I never, oh, let's say, oh, here. Here's an upcoming model 
video, which is going to be next week. We'll see what this is next week. <laughs> anyway, so for subscribers and everybody else, next week you're going to see what's in this box right here, what this mystery model is. Now that's exciting on its own right, but as a member, you get to see this video before it's actually posted to the subscribers, that is. So for the subscribers, this might come out on Friday, but for you as a member, guess when it comes out? Yes, that's right. It comes out the moment I upload it to YouTube and YouTube has finished processing it. And I can set a little thing saying basically only show it to members until this date, which could be a Friday, maybe two months from now, because I've been making a lot of videos recently. So maybe you'll see this two months from now as a subscriber, but as a member, you can see it the moment it comes available on YouTube. So that is what your little $2 is paying for. Your $2 is also paying so that I can get some more model kits and maybe something like new lights, because maybe this one's starting to wear out or whatever, or a new camera, one that's not keeping me in the shadows, even though I've got like four lights set on daylight all around me. I, I can't understand that. But at any rate, that's how your little $2 contributes to this channel. And as a trade-off, you get to see new videos. And sometimes I'll do a preview or premiere video and there'll be a chat box up top and everybody's chatting away and, you know, oh, that's a cool video, whatever, right? Well, if they want to post an emoji like a smiley face or, you know, thumbs up or whatever else, one of those emojis, they only get to choose the regular standard YouTube emoji box set. But as a member, you get four special emojis that I created myself. They're of a little character I call Peter, based off Peter Laurie. He's a little monster, purple monster with little horns. And if you've clicked on the community tab, you've probably seen a picture of him somewhere down there. Well, basically you get him as four emojis. So one's smiling, one's frowning, one's got a oh expression, and the other's got a tongue out, like, you know, sort of thing, just to be goofy. <laughs> so anyway, you can use those emojis if you're a member. So consider that. It's really cool and you'll help our channel to grow. Now, if you want to check out another cool unboxing video, click right here and you will see something really groovy from the USA. And if you want to buy some models, because I also own a hobby shop, Monster Hobbies, of course, hence the name of my channel, click on this icon down here and it'll take you directly to our website where you can check out some really cool model cars, old and new, rare and common. So until next time, everybody, Happy model building, and we'll see you in our next country.